When Elon Musk announced his ambitious plans for Starlink, he must have gotten many telecom and mobile data providers scared. Not only was Musk entering their space with all the capital that SpaceX had to spare, but he was also not competing like a regular company. Musk was not saying that he would build a couple of satellites, lay a couple of cables across the ocean floor, or go the normal route. He was saying that he would change the game entirely, and do it at a far lower cost to the end consumer. Consumer. This news got many people excited, of course, as it meant lower data prices, but that may not be strictly true. It appears that Musk isn't building Starlink to bring affordable internet to you or the market that the biggest data providers currently serve. Instead, he has a much more interesting plan in mind. In today's video, we'll be looking at why Musk doesn't think that Starlink will replace your internet, and whose internet precisely it wants the network to replace. And stick around for a super freak fact that will blow your mind just as at the end. Now, before we start, can you do us just a little favor and smash the like and subscribe buttons? You've done that? Great, let's get started. The Starlink Constellation People like to call Musk a visionary, but at Super Freaky Science, we like to be a bit more accurate with our descriptions. Musk is a visionary, but we think a better word to describe him would be the fixer, because he fixes things. Musk wasn't the first person to come up with the idea of electric cars, but he was the first person to make the idea scalable. He wasn't the first to ponder about reusable rockets, but his Falcon 9 rocket was the first to make multiple trips. It's the same way Musk isn't the first person to come up with the idea of an internet network based on satellites, but if Starlink is successful, he will be the first to make it work. In 2015, Musk told the world that he wanted to create a communications satellite network with bandwidth to carry up to 50% of all backhaul communication traffic, and up to 10% of local internet traffic in high-density cities. According to him, there was a huge unmet demand for low-cost global broadband capability abilities, and SpaceX was just primed to meet that demand. The program developed quickly, and by 2019, the company had started launching Starlink satellites, which are as small as a shoebox, and by early this year, they had launched over a thousand of them. So everything is going pretty good for Musk and his Starlink project, except for one tiny little fact. The internet isn't yours. When Musk spoke at the Mobile World Congress, MWC Barcelona, he had a lot to say, and he was also avoiding saying some things. For example, he never once mentioned that the Starlink network had the masses as a target market. According to him, the network wasn't even about most people at all, and was instead about filling the gaps between 5G and fiber, and getting into parts of the world that are hardest to reach. That is, if you aren't hard to reach, forget about Starlink. He even made mention of a number. According to him, Starlink was going to be a service for maybe 3 or 5 percent of the population, and one can infer that with this, he eliminates most urban populations. Interestingly, this wouldn't be the first time Musk would be saying something like this. At an event in 2020, he said that he didn't want Starlink to be a huge threat to telcos, and would be glad if they didn't treat it as one. Instead, he said that the network would be for customers that telcos are generally not able to reach. And again, that doesn't include you. If you can even manage the slightest sniff of 4G, Musk is saying Starlink isn't for you. Why? That's the next question to ask, of course. Why doesn't Musk want the Starlink network to be for everyone? Why is he just choosing off access? The answer to that question is, well, kind of demoralizing if you're a diehard fan of Musk, but it's true nonetheless. The thing is, the Starlink network isn't that good, and it simply can't deliver the kind of service that urban areas require. That's it. The service it offers is just not that great. Now, don't misunderstand us. Your internet speed, if connected to the Starlink 
Starlink network will constantly be able to reach 50 to 150 megabytes per second. However, it may not be able to stay at that level for long because of low latency issues. One beta stage tester of the network says that while it's fast, the network could disappear entirely at the slightest mention of trees. Additionally, Musk says that the bandwidth per cell for high-density areas like New York City or LA, for example, is simply not high enough. Even if Musk says that the Starlink network is for everyone, there are still many people who wouldn't be satisfied with it. It's just as well that he decided to only prioritize people who have no choice and are difficult to reach through traditional infrastructure. Before we go to the last segment, we've got a super freaky fact for you. And we've got a wager to boot. If you knew this fact we're about to tell you before, do nothing. But if you didn't, you have to like and subscribe and leave a comment. Deal? Deal. A spacesuit costs around $12 million. While the entire suit is a cool $12 million, 70% of that cost is for the backpack and control module. However, the spacesuits that NASA used were built in 1974. If these were priced by today's pricing, they would cost an estimated $150 million. You didn't know that, so do us a favor, smash the like and subscribe buttons, and leave a comment. Starlink isn't a done deal yet. We know it may look like it's done, with Starlink sending 60 satellites to the sky every other week, but it isn't really. According to Musk, the goal of Starlink right now is to avoid bankruptcy. That's because SpaceX would have to invest up to $10 billion in the network before it can even be cash positive. Musk says that the goal of Starlink is to remain online and remain viable until all that money can be invested into it. This may seem like a small thing, but it isn't. All of the companies who have tried to create a satellite-based constellation network before Starlinks have all failed because of bankruptcy. All of them. Why would Starlink be any different? Maybe because of the massive cash reserves of SpaceX or the magical ability of Musk to fix stuff? I guess we'll eventually find out, eh? That's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons. Now remember, keep using Super and we'll do the signs for you.